The next item on the uh, that we will handle is the last of my item on the agenda. It's Senate Bill 78, an act relating to prescriptive authority of advanced practice registered no nurses, sponsored by Senator Julie Adams. Senator? You're welcome to. Welcome uh, as a committee member. Uh, welcome. And this is surely not a topic that we've not heard about it seems like we talk about it every session so it's great to have you and uh your people with you if you would introduce yourself and you have your guests introduce themselves for the record and proceed with your testimony we will be hearing 10 minutes of testimony 10 minutes of we'll testimony be quick, i promise um, thank you and thank you i'm julie rocky adams senate district 36 representing jefferson county I'm pleased to present to you Senate Bill 78, for which I am the primary sponsor, and so is Senator Paul Hornback. We have bipartisan support for Senate Bill 78 from our co-sponsors. Senator Hornback and I strongly support this legislation because of our concern that Kentuckians across the Commonwealth do not have access they need to quality health care. I know that advanced practice registered nurses provide that kind of health care because I have seen a nurse practitioner's care firsthand. As all of you all know, we have been dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic since last March, and we are still not out of the woods. One of the things that this pandemic has brought to light is the inequity in our healthcare system, both here in Kentucky and across the nation. If we ever had any doubts about the importance of access to quality health care, this pandemic has emphasized and underscored that access is critical, and the easier it is to get care, the closer it is to home, the more likely that Kentuckians will go to see their health care provider. We also know that the loss of jobs here often means a loss of employer-sponsored health insurance. We have seen that Medicaid has frequently provided a health care lifeline to many Kentuckians and their families. So we need quality providers who are willing to take Medicaid patients, and we need them in underserved areas, both rural and urban. And we have that workforce in Kentucky, and they are called Advanced Practice Registered Nurses. What we are changing with Senate Bill 78 is removing the barriers to health care access by removing the requirement for having a collaborative agreement for prescriptive authority for controlled substances, referred to as a Kappa CS. After the APRN has had a Kappa CS for four years, and after the Kentucky Board of Nursing reviews the license status of that APRN, it only then will they be given final approval. Like all of you, I'm very concerned about the opioid epidemic in our Commonwealth, and I would not be bringing this bill if I thought for any reason that there should be that concern that this bill would add to that problem. The CASPER data shows APRNs to be prudent prescribers of controlled substances, including opioids. In fact, the CASPER data shows on average that APRNs are writing fewer prescriptions for scheduled drugs than our physicians in some cases. Like scripts for Schedule II opioids, APRNs are writing less than 50% of the number of scripts that physicians are writing. The CASPER data has good news about the prescribing of opioids by dentists, physicians, and APRNs. From 2015 to 2020, the average number of scripts written by all three provider groups has decreased. The percentage of decrease in prescribing opioids by dentists is 38% by physicians is 19%, and by APRNs, 34%. We know the importance of medication-assisted treatment for those with opioid addiction, and over 500 APRNs have taken the training and have obtained the waiver to be able to prescribe the medications for this treatment. However, because of the Kappa CS requirement, we have trained providers who could help address our opioid crisis, and they are unable to provide that much-needed care. So the Kentucky Board of Nursing has the responsibility to oversee and regulate the practice of all nurses, including APRNs. Senate Bill 78 has language that suggests by Senator Givens last session, which strengthens the already strong regulation and vigilance around prescribing that the nursing board has in place. Instead of an automatic withdrawal of the Kappa CS requirement after the APRN has had it for four years, the bill calls for a review of the APRN's license by the Kentucky Board of Nursing to make sure that everything is in order with no outstanding complaints or problems before that APRN is authorized to prescribe without a Kappa CS. 
The bill strengthens the ability of the Kentucky Board of Nursing to oversee APRM prescribing. And then I wanted to emphasize that Senate Bill 78 does not increase the number of APRM prescribers of controlled substances or opioids. The APRN, like all other prescribers, must adhere to the provisions of House Bill 1, which was passed in 2012, and House Bill 333, which was passed in 2017. So I have with me Dr. Wendy Fletcher, President of the Kentucky Association of Nurse Practitioners, and Dr. Beth Parton, Legislative Chair, with me to present their testimony. Thank you, doctors. You have four minutes between you all. <laughs> Sorry. I tried to be fast. That's okay. <laughs> Well, I'm Wendy Fletcher, and I'm a doctorally prepared nurse practitioner from Moorhead, Kentucky. And for the last 22 years, I've been serving patients. I'm sorry. I've been serving patients in the northeastern Kentucky area. After 22 years and 5,000 patients, I can tell you that this is a good, safe, and prudent bill. I'm here today to answer any questions on behalf of t over 2,000 nurse practitioners represented by the Kentucky Association of Nurse Practitioners and Nurse Midwives. Senate Bill 78 is not unique. It is, in fact, Senate, uh, House Bill 286 resurrected from the COVID-restricted legislative session of 2020, where it had over 40 co-sponsors in the House and bipartisan support in the Senate because it was well recognized, as it is again this year, as a bill that centers on improving patient access to research-proven quality health care. And it supports what a year in COVID world has taught us all. APRNs have worked without collaborative agreements under the emergency orders at the federal and the state level, and the proverbial sky has not fallen. Senate Bill 78 is not an expansion of the scope of practice of APRNs, as it does not change an APRN's ability to continue to provide independent clinical judgment or independent decision making in their clinical practices. We have always, under both federal and state law, practiced independently only prescribing has been collaborative. Senate Bill 78 does not change the hard stops already in Kentucky law, restricting Schedule II drugs like oxycodone and long-acting morphine to 72 hours. These limits have been in place since 2006 and with this bill will remain. Senate Bill 78 does not eliminate the requirement to have and keep a collaborative agreement with a physician for the first four years of an APRN's prescribing of controlled medications. Senate Bill 78 does not interfere with any employer or hospital's contractual agreement with any APRN who chooses to sign such an agreement. It also does not change the collaboration between NPs um, and other professionals who need to be involved in a patient's care. Senate Bill 78 does not increase access to opioids, but it does increase access to NP care care by professionals who have proven knowledge evidenced by their education and board certification, their experience and their actions to exercise great caution and great care in their prescribing practices. Kentucky APRNs have been safely writing prescriptions for non-controlled medications since 1996 and safely prescribing controlled substances since 2006. Senate Bill 78 does not add a new category of prescribers to the mix. Kentucky APRNs have been part of the CASPER program, and according to the most recent data from the Cabinet for Health and Family Services and CASPER, even though APRNs comprise nearly 25% of the prescribing workforce, nurse practitioners in Kentucky wrote less than 0.007% of the total doses of oxycodone, one of the strongest prescription painkillers. But on the other hand, nurse practitioners stepped up and wrote 38% of the doses for harm-reducing, life-saving medications like buprenorphine for those suffering from the opioid use disorder. Doctor, uh, it pains me to interrupt you, but you're going to have to draw to conclusion. Sure. Okay. Do you want to conclude for us? How about that? <laughs> Thank you. We're, we're over the time limits, which means we're going to have to go over with the other group also, but uh, uh, please uh, please introduce yourself and proceed. I'll be very brief. Um, thank you, uh, Senator Schickel and committee members for allowing us to speak today. Um, my name is Dr. Beth Parton. I'm a family nurse practitioner. I practice in rural Adair County, and um, I own a practice, and it's a health provider shortage area. My practice saw about 7,000 visits last year, and 72% of my practice is made up of Medicare and Medicaid patients. 
Nurse practitioners who have opened a practice have invested their own money or have taken out significant small business loans to start a business. I had to borrow $125,000 to open my practice. It's expensive to purchase medical equipment and it can take up to three months before insurance companies begin reimbursing for services. Nurse practitioners live in fear that they will lose their CAPA CS because the physician withdraws, charges a fee they can't afford, or moves out of state or passes away. I can honestly tell you that these things have happened to nurse practitioners I know. Losing the CAPA CS means losing the practice. It means patients will not get the care they need. It means an economic loss to the community because staff who's been hired by the nurse practitioner lose their job. And I can also tell you, if I lost my CAPA CS, no local physician would sign an agreement with me. Not because we don't get along or that they don't like me. We get along fine. It's because I'm competition. Senate Bill 78 is not just about prescribing scheduled drugs. It also, also um, you're required to have a DEA number in order to order flu vaccine, injectable antibiotics, syringes, oxygen, and other necessary supplies to run a practice. You also need a DEA number for some mail order uh, non-scheduled drugs for out-of-state uh, prescriptions. Under current law, Kentucky nurse practitioners must have a CAPA CS in order to get a DEA number. Senate Bill 78 would um, allow nurse practitioners after the four-year period to uh, retain their DEA number and order supplies that they need. My last point is that um, in the states that have granted um, nurse practitioners authority to practice to the full extent of their education and training, none of these states have rescinded that um, or have changed their laws to require a collaborative agreement. So I ask you to please vote for Senate Bill 78. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, Senator Hornback, um, would it be all right if we would let the other group testify and then do the questions then, or do you need to ask a question right now? Why? But, but it's your pleasure. Okay. Do you want okay. us to leave the table? Or uh, are they not urgent? really. I think they're remote, actually, okay. so it doesn't make any difference. Um, and uh, so to be fair, um, Let's see, who do we got here? We have uh, Dr. Ron Walridge and uh, uh, Carrie Meadows. Neither of them are strangers to here. Uh, both of them to this committee. Both of them are on Zoom. Um, uh, to be fair, uh, we will give you 15 minutes of testimony. However, gentlemen, you get bonus points if you do not use all your time uh, because we, we have a lot on the agenda and we have people that want to ask questions. Um, I would suggest that you limit your testimony to, you know, we've heard a lot of testimony over the years about this, but this is really about the cap agreement. And I think there's some disagreement over prescriptive authority and the effects this would have. Uh, so Dr. Ron and Corey, welcome. Introduce yourself for the record and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Chairman Schickle. Um, I'm uh, Dr. Ron Waldridge. I'm a board certified family physician, uh, practiced in Shelbyville for over 20 years. Uh, served as the coroner here in Shelby County for 10 years and remain as the medical director for EMS services here in Shelby County. And that's uh, what I'm basing my testimony on today. I also am a member uh, for over 20 years of the Kentucky Medical Associate Association, and the Kentucky Academy of Family Physicians. And on behalf of my colleagues in those uh, uh, organizations, I appreciate the opportunity uh, for me to speak today. I'd like to be clear from the outset that the Kentucky Medical Association and Kentucky Academy of Family Physicians strongly oppose Senate Bill 78 and any other legislative or regulatory efforts by APRNs to expand prescriptive authority related to Schedule II through Schedule V controlled substances. I'd like to spend just a few minutes highlighting for you the reasons why. Uh, as we already know with data, it, it can be sliced different ways. And uh, I, I, with respect to Senator Adams, we have some CASPER data. We went back through 2011. Uh, so we went from 2011 to 2020 and looked at prescribing by APRNs during that time. From 2011 to through 20, there's been a 393% increase in doses of Schedule II through Schedule V controlled substances. During that same time, APRM prescribing of Schedule II through Schedule or Schedule III through Schedule V controlled substances increased by 478%, and APRN of Schedule II opioids also increased by 251%. 
the continued rise in APR and controlled substance abuse or controlled substance prescriptions throughout 2020 is especially concerning. As has been mentioned before in March 2020, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we had a number of uh, health care providers throughout the Commonwealth who had significantly reduced patient volumes uh, and even closing of offices, as well as many medical facilities. Uh, due to that, those lower patient volumes would have naturally resulted in a decrease in the number of controlled prescriptions by healthcare providers. While this was the result for physicians, during this time, APRM prescriptions increased for controlled substances. One possible explanation is the executive order in March 2020 that allowed the APRMs to practice without the CAPA CS for 11 months now. So we feel like 2020 has offered a preview of what will occur in future years if the CAPA CS is phased out. Removal of the CAPA CS, we must point out, does nothing to increase access to health care for underserved areas. In fact, the CAPA CS does not prohibit or impede APRN's ability to bring their health care expertise and care to Kentuckians who live in our state's health professional shortage areas. They have had the ability to treat and diagnose independently and prescribe with a collaborative agreement for many years in any area of the state they choose. However, research shows that APRNs largely practice in the same general area as physicians. Regardless of this, making it easier to prescribe controlled substances would not be considered as a reason to get any practitioner group to underserved areas. Senate Bill 78 strictly pertains to the prescribing of controlled substances, not comprehensive access to care. Senate Bill 78 also phases out this CAPA CS over time, but it also removes the current wait period of one year before newly licensed APRNs can prescribe controlled substances. New physicians upon attaining their medical degree will be not permitted to prescribe controlled substances unless they're under the oversight of an attending physician for at least a year. We don't know why we would adopt a lower standard for APRNs. This bill also increases the number of psychostimulants. Certain APRNs can currently prescribe from a 30-day supply with no refills to a 30-day supply with two refills. This is problematic because as was testified before legislative committee during the 2019 interim, by representatives of the Kentucky Office of Drug Control Policy, the number of prescriptions for psychostimulants is increasing at an alarming rate. The impact on our most vulnerable citizens should also be considered when making changes that allow more prescriptions for controlled substances. Thousands of children and families across the Commonwealth have been directly and indirectly impacted by the effects of the opioid crisis as addiction to prescription painkillers and heroin has swept the state. Oddly, seven, Senate Bill 78 proponents acknowledge the number of prescriptions is increasing. However, the claim is due to the increasing number of APRNs who can practice in Kentucky. If the CAPA CS is a significant barrier to APRN practice, why do we have an increasing number of APRNs that locate or remain in Kentucky to practice? Regardless, uh, you know, this number we feel like is at least about 300 APRN prescribers per year um that has to equate into increased opioid prescriptions because there's no uh, limit on the number of APRNs that can practice in the state. In short, if the CAPA CS for APRNs is removed, it will be even easier for more prescriptions and doses of controlled substances to be prescribed, which I think is the exact opposite of what we need in this time of pandemic. For all these reasons, uh, I respectfully ask for you to oppose Senate Bill 78. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Thank you, Dr. Corr. I can't imagine there's anything else to be said after that testimony. It was excellent testimony, Mr. Chairman. And uh, for the record, I am Corey Meadows uh, with the Kentucky Medical Association. I will uh, allow uh, Dr. Waldridge's comments uh, to be our comments, and I'm happy to assist with any questions that the committee members have. Thank you uh, for being so gracious. Um, and uh, we do have some questions, and I wanted to get to them because that's the important part. That's why we're here. Uh, Senator Hornback. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, 
Senator Adams, I appreciate you and, and your guests being here today and introducing this bill because I do think, uh, contrary to my own doctor, uh, Dr. Waldrich, who's been my doctor, him and his dad, for a long, long time, and I very much respect uh, their views and opinions, uh, I do think that this does uh, fill a void uh, in the in Kentucky uh, for those places that don't have uh, proper access to care that we need, especially during these pandemic times. You know, this is, Beth, as you said, it's it's more than about scheduled drugs. There are a lot of other things that, that are in this, too. And I think in, in order for, for our nurse practitioners to uh, properly treat their patients, uh, to, to be able to do it in a, a uh, very, uh, I guess, uh, time when we have a lot of problem with finances and other things and people being able to do it and what nurse practitioners feel in that void, I think is very good. The one question I had, or a couple questions, uh, and I want to make sure everybody understood this, is that, you know, in no way does this, and I know it's of interest to hospitals and, and uh, individual practices, in no way did this impede any individual practice or hospital from requiring a cap of CS of that practitioner. Is that true? That is correct. <laughs> Yeah, and in fact, um, most of the hospitals and individual doctors practice I've talked to are supportive because it doesn't change their status at all. And this does not uh, increase the scope of practice in any way. Uh, all this is is a barrier that, and I appreciate uh, Senator Givens for his uh, uh, request to put in the addition this year that uh, they would be reviewed by the Board of Nursing before they could have that cap removed. And I appreciate that. So I think it's a very, a very good bill. I think when in the Commonwealth we need more access to care, uh, I think this is, is the thing we need to do. And I know that, uh, Beth, uh, you had mentioned a lot of times there's, you know, the reasons that, why somebody may not sign a CAPA, some doc may not sign a CAPA. And I think you said that very well, why sometimes that's not done. So I'd encourage all members to vote for it, and I fully support this bill. Thank you, Senator Hornback. Senator McDaniel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want, I've heard the doctor online's testimony. I want to hear from you guys. Are we creating a quicker path to prescribing authority without oversight on page 12, subsection G1, by removing the one year? Is, the, is Are we creating a quicker path to prescriptive authority for APRNs than MDs. We are not because they are already under, as he mentioned, with interns. He's talking about residency interns being under physicians. Um, nurse practitioners would already be in a collaborative agreement with um, a physician. So they're already, it's already going to remain in place for that four years. So no, we do not see that as a quicker path. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, Senator Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My question is for Senator Adams. Senator Adams, you testified that nurse practitioners you know, have not increased uh, their prescription of opioids at the same rate that doctors and other healthcare professionals had. I think you mentioned that, that, they're, that they were prescribing at about a 34% rate, you used that term. Uh, I'm just curious as to what was the source of your data when you gave your testimony? Sure, thank you. And it's from Casper. And um, we've both analyzed the 2020 numbers of dentists, doctors, and APRNs. And we've also gone back to 2011. The one thing that um, uh, Wendy and I were discussing up here is when he used the data, and I, I forget the exact percentage increase. It was a little misleading, and so I do want to shed some light on that, um, the data that he showed. But the data that I show, from 2020, you have 1,961 dentists. The number of scripts those dentists have written is 172,000, approximately. So that's 87.8 per prescriber. You have 9,846 physicians in Kentucky in 2020. They have written 2,059,287 scripts. That's 209 per prescriber. And the number of APRNs in Kentucky is 3,782. The number of scripts APRNs have written is 380,771. 
So per prescriber, APRNs are only prescribing 100.7. Thank you, Senator Adams. Thank you. Uh, uh, and the last question is going to go to Senator Nemus. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And this is for Dr. Waldridge. You mentioned that uh, the APRNs uh, are prescribing more and more, uh, but aren't they under the doctor's uh, compact? They are currently, they have a cap of CS that would uh, govern the prescribing of the scheduled substances. Our, uh, the House of Medicine in years past have brought forth uh recommendations to change the kappa cs to make it a more um amenable document to uh provide uh, oversight unfortunately uh we've not been met with any success at improving the kappa cs mr chairman may i make a comment yeah well, a brief comment go I'm, ahead i'm also not aware at this point that casper is tracking the physician assistance data Physician assistants are supervised directly by physicians, so their data would add to the numbers for physicians as well. Thank you for that. Thank you for that information. We have a motion on the bill uh, by Senator Hornback. Is there a second? Who is that the second? Uh, 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 by Senator Howe, we have a motion uh, and a second. L let the record reflect. Um, we have a, a lot of business to still do, and so I. this is one of those issues when I talk to members, I, it seems like most members pretty well know where they're at, uh, aren't too confused about it. So um, I think if there's, unless there's a question or comment, we should, maybe can go ahead and vote. Does some, anyone have an urgent question or comment? Very well. Madam Secretary, call the roll. Senator Adams. Aye. Senator Buford. Aye. Senator Higdon. Senator Hornback. Aye. Senator Howell. Aye. Senator McDaniel. Cast my vote and explain, Mr. Chairman. Vote and explain. I'll keep it brief. I'm going to vote aye, which is different than I have in the past. And I want to make a comment. Go ahead. I don't, I don't know where to assign the blame exactly, but the fact is, the level of opioids that have made it into their hand, the hands of Kentuckians in the last 15 years has been disgraceful. And the amount of opioids that have made it into the hands of Americans in the last 15 years has been disgraceful. The financial cost, the societal cost, the, the, the impact on families is absolutely unstated. And there's not a soul here who can look me in the eye or look anybody else in the eye and reasonably argue that it was motivated by anything other than greed at multiple levels. And I'm not accusing you guys of that, and I'm not accusing these doctors of that, but that's where it started. And it came through a prescriptive process. And I say that to say to you guys, as, the, as these are lifted, the state and our society will count on you to not let this go down that road again. We will still be decades cleaning up the mess that's been prescription pain pills in this state and in this nation. And Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the indulgence. We could go on and on and on, but understand there's a tremendous we, responsibility. We, we cannot do that. We Thank have you. another important bill. S Senator Neal. Senator Nemus. I'd like to explain my vote, my aye vote. Vote and explain. I'm voting aye because I think this needs to go to the floor. Uh, there's a lot of things wrong with this situation, not necessarily the bill. Uh, first of all, there's too many prescribers, and I'm very, very concerned with that. That's why I was going to vote no, and I may on the floor. Uh, the doctors have not done their job. That's why we're here. They're not doing the oversight like they're getting paid for. And as far as worrying about uh, uh, businesses, that uh, opened up knowing that that would be an expense and then saying they don't need the expense now. I disagree with that point, too. Uh, so I am voting aye. Thank you. Senator Thayer. No. Senator Thomas. 
Chairman Schickel. No. Senate Bill 78 is passed with favorable expression by a vote of 8 to 2. Thank you for your testimony, ladies. Congratulations.